I'm in the Department of Biology, and uh, my research is on biodiversity, especially freshwater fishes in uh, South America. And uh, it's a very rich and diverse ecosystem with over 6,000 species already known, representing a very large fraction of all the world vertebrates, something like 10% of all the vertebrates, including snakes and other fishes. And the questions we are, uh, the evolution and ecological reasons for these species, and the status as uh, climates and other land use changes occur in the Anthropocene. So here's a uh, photo montage showing you some of the diversity of forms and shapes and sizes of the different kinds of fishes. These are all just, you probably might have noticed while we're hiding in them. Uh, this is put together by one of my clever graduate students. So. But the idea is this is just the one place that we collect in um, Peru. Uh, here's a, a feeling for some of the diversity. Freshwater teleos globally um, constitute about 14,000 species. And uh, this is the most species dense vertebrate fauna in the world. So our, my research and, the, and my students, we work on the ecological and evolutionary reasons for that. And you can see here, if you look at it in terms of river basins, the density of species here is highest in the, wet, in the Amazon, especially in the Western Amazon. So it's a global center of diversity. Okay, Here's some photographs of um, uh, me and my students working in different environments, collecting fishes. In the lower left, you can see uh, some of the fishes are, that I work especially on are the electric fishes. And they represent a model for understanding not only how animals generate and use electricity, but also how lineages diverge over evolutionary time frames. Uh, a lot of our activity in the field involves sorting and identifying lots of small silvery fishes. Um, if you've been fishing here in the Chapawai Basin, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's um, three or four times more diverse locally in places in Peru where we work. Uh, fish photography, to get uh, images that's a lot easier to identify them from the colors when they're live than after they've been preserved in alcohol. I did not get the timing on this exactly right. <laughs> Uh, sampling uh, tissues uh, to do genetic work, as most of modern biodiversity research involves using DNA um, and all of the informatics that go along with that. So um, keeping track of all the tissue samples so that you don't get the wrong, <coughs> the wrong species. So the works are summarized in the form of these regional accounts. So these represent several books that I've contributed to, including one there on the left, uh, sorry, on the right which is a summary of an NSF funded project that took four years working in the lowland Caribbean Amazon. And uh, then these larger compilations looking, summarizing classification, taxonomy, and the evolutionary biology across the whole region. And so this is obviously work that involves many collaborators from many institutions throughout the Americas, North and South America. Uh, recently, and some of the things I'll show you in a few minutes, are a result of collaboration with my long-term collaborator, uh, Roberto Hayes, uh, who's a Brazilian. And in this paper in Journal of Fish Biology that just came out last week, so I had to show you the title here, Fish Biodiversity and Conservation in South America, where we identified the main threats to conservation in the tropics. Um, here's a, a feeling from where we are taxonomically now in South America. There are um, uh, over 5,000 5, species currently described and 10% uh, of them are, or just 20% of them are described in the last 10 years. And you can see the curve continues to go up. And if you, rec if you I don't know if you recognize this image here from Darwin's Tree of Life, the one image in the Origin of Species, where he talks about the diversity, uh, diversification of species based on extinction and speciation. And these are ecological processes that translate into the production of biodiversity. And in Darwin's day, he had largely just anatomical information. Today we have um, genetic information and even genomic information where we can use hundreds or thousands of loci and tens of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of base pairs, and especially using this new class of data called UCEs, uh, we can align them. Um, the, some of this work it takes on a physiological bent, and so I was involved with this project to look at how electric organs are generated in New World and Old World electric fishes. At 
the electric bill. And the next one shows another recent paper in science uh, by Kurt Weinmiller and colleagues uh, talking about diversity and it has its effect uh, and the, the effects of dam construction on biodiversity. And the main point of this slide is to show you that there are 38 collaborators, 39 including the yeah, uh, on this project, just to show you that this kind of work involves lots of uh, collaborations among different institutions. So, uh, as I always tell my students, biodiversity is collected in the field. And this, these are two sites here in Louisiana with some graduate students. And it's discovered in the lab. So, thanks very much, and I hope that brief uh, introduction gives you a feel for what we're doing. Thank you.